Residential Sales Comparison and Income Approaches book, page 202. It just had an extra note saying leaseholds are partial interests. Page 203, units or chapter seven, using the sales comparison and income approaches in special situations. To this point, the content of this text has illustrated the fundamental principles and procedures of the sales comparison and income approaches. However, there are some special situations regarding the applications of these valuation methods that warrant discussion now that the fundamental concepts and techniques have been covered. The application of the sales comparison approach and the income approach is not one size fits all. Sometimes the subject of a particular appraisal assignment may not be for the entire physical property or the full fee simple interest. In many assignments, there may be assignment conditions such as Fannie Mae regulations and guidelines that have special requirements that affect some of the elements discussed throughout the, this text. This chapter is certainly not intended to cover every special situation an appraiser could encounter. However, we will review and discuss the most common circumstances. Residential Sales Comparison and Income Approaches, page 204. Appraised. In some cases, the scope of the assignment may include fee interest or the leasehold or leased fee estate may need to be. There are various reasons why an appraisal of the leasehold or leased simple. There are many examples of a partial interest. In this portion, both cases. The interest being appraised is something less than fee when the subject of an appraisal assignment involves a partial interest considered complex, especially for most residential appraisers. In of the chapter, we will review some of the more common situations or a special ownership arrangement. The assignment is usually residential sales comparison and income approaches appraising partial interests and special ownership relevant to residential appraisers. Leasehold and leased fee interests only valuing this interest. One example might be when the load is to be sold and assigned to another party. Another example might be when the new owner of a property, which is leased at below MARCA level, desires to buy out the remaining term of the lease from AL existing lessee. There are several methods by which to value the leasehold O leased fee interests of a particular property. Most of these methods are income techniques. For residential properties, the simplest and most common method of developing a value opinion for the leasehold or leased fee interest is the GRM technique. The sales comparison approach is of little value unless comparable sales of similar leasehold or leased fee interests can be located. The concept of leasehold and leased fee interests was introduced in Chapter 5. However, it is important to review and expand upon that discussion here. As noted earlier, the leased fee interest belongs to the lesser, and the leasehold interest belongs to the lessee. Let's look at an illustration and the important points that should be noted. Double in contract rent is less TBHAN market rent, an advantage to the lessee occurs and creates a positive leasehold. When contract rent is more TBAN market rent, an advantage to the lesser occurs and creates a negative leasehold. Positive leasehold occurs when the lessee is paying less than market rent. Negative leasehold is when the lessee is paying rent higher than market level. The leasehold interest is defined by the amount of rent that is less than market rent, amount of difference between contract and market rent. The leased fee interest is defined by the amount of contract rent over and above market rent. 204. 